A very warm welcome to all our participants. Thank you all for joining in today. Zarna, Tushar, Manoj, Durvasalu, Manish, Parvati, Zarna. Thank you so much for joining in. Well, it's time to begin with our today's session. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A sense of belonging to a group is something we all desire at home, at work, or at any greater community. Conversely, when we have that sense of belonging, it can help to create a more meaningful life. It make us feel like we are part of something bigger than ourselves. That's why for some belonging and attachment to co-workers is a better motivator than money for employees deciding whether to leave or to stay at their current job. Employees who have sense of belonging is the, in the workplace are also 3.5 times more likely to contribute to their full potential. Have we ever wondered what makes employee engaged and happy? What is the determining ingredient that makes people continue with organizations. Today, we are going to understand this factor from different dimensions, relate to our own lives, understand how this can be demonstrated so that we go back to create happier teams. Let's hear it from our expert today. HR Association of India welcomes you all to the 2021 Dialogue Masterclass Series on the topic, creating a sense of belonging at the workplace. To know more about HRAI and its event, I would request all our participants to visit the link and details posted in the chat window. I request all the participants to kindly follow the webinar guidelines mentioned in the chat window. It would be great to have all the participants' feedback. We will be running a poll before the Q&A session. I request all participants to kindly give your feedback on the session. I now take the privilege to introduce our esteemed speaker for today, Ms. Sindhu Kalyan Sundaram, founder of Ignite Academy. Sindhu brings in rich experience in organizational development and management consulting. Her experience spans across retail, banking, and financial services, loyalty marketing, FMCG, IT consulting, agriculture, BPO, manufacturing, and engineering. Having worked across India and the United Kingdoms with GE, Nestle, Infosys, Cognizant, New Look Retailers, Fenian International, she is the founder of Ignite Academy and Server Happiness. She helps organizations enable enhance employee happiness levels as well as effectiveness. Most importantly, she works in enhancing organizations create a sense of belonging for their people. She has worked with global audiences and cultures. Some of the companies she has delivered workshops are Biocon, Aditya Birla Miniacs, HCL Technologies, Marico, Larson and Turbo, LNT Valves, Cesa Care, Tesco, ELGI Equipments, and many more. She holds a postgraduate degree in Marketing and Information Technology from SP Jain Institute of Management and Research, Mumbai. You can also follow her on LinkedIn. Details for the same are mentioned in the chat window. I now hand over the platform to Ms. Sindhu. Over to you, Sindhu. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, HRAI. A very good afternoon to all of you. I always love quoting Helen Keller in many of my situations. The most beautiful things in life are those that cannot be seen or even touched. They can only be felt. And over the next few minutes, it's my pleasure to take all of us through what is that most beautiful feeling we can leave our employees with. What is that most beautiful feeling which can be the most determining factor for an employee to stay with an organization? Or what is that most beautiful feeling that lets an employee take ownership? Now consider two situations. Situation number one, 
you are an employee of an organization and you're working, you've been there in that organization, let's say for about six or seven months, you've started understanding the nuances of how the processes work, what sort of people are employed in the organization, what is the organization culture and so on. And then the company decides one particular day to go ahead and send out a letter to your family. So they go and send a letter to your family with a lot of stars around that sheet of paper saying that your son or your daughter is a star of our organization and we value his or her contribution at the workplace. And it's signed by the top-notch people in the organization, all the managers, the AVPs have signed it and your family receives it. How would you feel? Can I see some responses in the chat box? How would you feel when you realize your family has received this kind of a letter from your organization? Anyone? I'll ask Peter, how will you feel? Important, okay? You feel great, very proud, fantastic. Okay, proud and happy, lovely. Situation number two, you're working for an organization. You've been there in the organization for a few months. You've understood what sort of people are employed. You've understood the processes. You've understood the organization culture. And the company also understands you as an employee. And then the company waits for one whole year and then organizes a rewards and recognition program. And then on one particular day after 365 days says that you can come on stage and receive a certificate for being a valuable employee. Which of the two scenarios would you prefer? Scenario one or scenario two? You would feel immense pleasure. Okay. Scenario two. Okay. How about the Please. others? How about the others? Scenario two. Okay. Two. Right. So my question to all of you is what is the difference between scenario one and scenario two? In scenario one, the company goes ahead and sends a letter immediately to the family. In scenario two, the company waits for one whole year and then sends you to receive an award from the organization. What if it's a combination of both scenario one and scenario two? How would you feel? Wouldn't that be fantastic? Instead of having to wait for 12 months, well, so the letter that I was telling you was something that my family received and the organization is GE. So I'm going to show you that letter. It was sent close to 20 years back and now you see why, how precious it is. So this is how the letter looks. You see stars all over the letter and it's, it has the names of all the managers and the AVP out there. So you can imagine how elated I felt. You can imagine how happy my family was when they received this letter. So much so that my father went to the extent of actually sending a letter back to the organization saying, thank you so much for valuing the contribution of our daughter. And we are very confident that she is in a professional organization that has a personal touch and an organization which will acknowledge her achievements. Now, GE went even one more step further. They took that note letter that my father sent and put it on the notice board so that whoever walks by the notice board could actually see the letter. Now, think about it. What is the organization actually doing? How much cost must have been involved for the organization to just print a letter, stick a postage stamp, and then send it out? But look at the ripple effect. This organization was not appealing only to the family. The organization was appealing to the parent, the, the brother, the brother, sister, the aunt, 
the uncle, whoever is the extended family, so much so that the entire family starts feeling a sense of belonging to the organization. And all it cost the organization was just the postage charges, that stamp envelope and the cost of printing a color printout. But look at the ripple effect. Can you even think if an employee would want to leave such an organization? The employee, even if the employee wants to leave the organization, they would probably have the extended family reiterating, saying, hey, don't, don't leave that organization. It's a fantastic place. They've sent uh, you a recognition letter. So the reinforcement would start from the family. And that is sense of belonging, not just with the employee, but with the extended family, when they start feeling that this is my place of work, this is my organization, this is my team, this is my piece of work, this is my project. If you want to do an analogy for this, think about your families. Nobody in our families will have to tell us to do this or do that, right? We just assume responsibility because we feel that we belong to this family. How beautiful it would be if we were able to create this similar ambience, atmosphere, and culture in our organizations. Number one, our attrition rates would definitely drop. Number two, there would be an enhanced sense of productivity. Number three, with intense sense of ownership, there would be a lot of opportunities for creativity and innovation. Most importantly, the employees of the organization would easily align with the values, the vision and mission. So I have a question for you. Now that many of you probably have been working for the last few years, let's take an imaginary timeline of the past five years. How many of us remember any of our project milestones or quality guidelines or policies that we followed five years back? Anyone in the chat box? Can you actually replicate that verbatim in the chat box? Do you remember any policy, procedure, milestone or metric that you slogged for five years back? And would you be actually be able to quote that verbatim? Okay, now I'll ask you another question. Would you be able to remember any single person who made you feel extremely good about yourself? Yes or no in the chat box. So Parvati has sent a message, some caliber and awards after your hardship. Okay. So Peter, you remember, how are the others? Do you remember any one person who really made you feel good five years back? Parvati says, yes, thank you. How about the others? Maybe even 10 years back, could be anyone from your professional life, from your personal life. Yes, Deepti says yes. Why is it that we say yes very quickly? All of you, many of you, I'm getting a lot of yeses for the second question. Why is it that we remember the second scenario more than the first scenario? Think about it, our project milestones, policies, quality control, metrics, all these are something that have been ingrained in us, right? So day in and day out, we have been working towards them, which means we should be able to recall that instantly but we find it very difficult to do that. But when I ask you, do you remember anyone who's made you feel good and you automatically say yes, and why is that? That's because the answer lies in the question itself. Our feelings remain etched. They remain indelible for a long period of time compared to our policies, milestones, metrics, procedures, protocols, deadlines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera what actually stands up about on our mind is how someone made us feel. And that feeling can be encapsulated as sense of belonging. Does my manager make me feel that I belong to the team? Does my leader make me feel valued? Do my team members believe that I provide immense contribution, not only to the team, but also to their growth? 
So today we're going to see the different dimensions of what sense of belonging means. How can we go about inculcating this sense of belonging? And how are we going to see this? We are going to see this through a lot of simple real life stories. So let me talk to you about one particular story. I'm sure uh, Peter must be aware of it. Uh, this happened right on this particular forum in one of the panel discussions. And it was fantastic to understand how much the founder of that company went forward to create that sense of belonging. So remember, I was asking this question to this founder and asking him, uh, I think it was about empathy or it was about what kind of values you think organizations should demonstrate during the pandemic. And one particular answer he gave was resonating about empathy. So during the pandemic, one of the biggest challenge that this company faced was that since most of the employees were working from home, they got back to the company saying that they did not have comfortable chairs at their homes. Now, many workplaces have ergonomically designed chairs on which people sit for a major portion of the day. But since they're working from home, many of them said they did not have those kind of chairs and therefore it was making their work in life difficult. And guess what this person did? Now, he was saying that just before the pandemic, they wanted to undergo a renovation process for which they had ordered 200 new chairs. And because the pandemic happened, they were unable to continue with this process. So immediately what the leader did was he got 200 chairs delivered to the doorstep of the employees. Now, if you were that employee, how would you feel? Thank you, Parvati. I can see the thumbs up sign and clapping. You're really elated. Wonderful. How about the others? If you were that employee, how would you feel? Receiving a chair from your leader at your doorstep. I remember one of the people whom I asked this question saying, I would feel overwhelmed. I would probably have tears in my eyes. I mean, it's just a chair. But the entire gesture of getting that chair delivered to that doorstep would literally move me to tears. Dipti says, fantastic, think about it. And you would feel, Jaita would feel how much the company cares within quotes. Fantastic, I love the way you put that word in quotes because sense of belonging in one particular way can be evoked by the management or the HR or the immediate fraternity demonstrating care and concern. Let's again look at the analogy of our family, right? We all demonstrate, display care and concern in many different ways. And that's exactly what this leader was doing, demonstrating how much of care, how much of concern he has for his employees. So Dipti says, people-oriented culture flourishes, absolutely. An organization grows with its people. And when you have fantastic people, people who are willing to go the extra mile, people who are willing to take ownership, people who are willing to say, this is my work, can be a sustainable organization. Parvati says, you would feel a lot important, yes. That is about making your employee feel valued. So lesson number one, the way we can demonstrate sense of belonging amongst our teams is to show how much care and how much concern we have for them. It could be explicit, it could be subtle. It could be through words, it could be through gestures, it could be through actions, it could also be through silence. It could be either way, but as long as the other person is able to grasp this emotion and this feeling and is able to understand that you are demonstrating care and concern, then we can well be assured that we are on the right path. So let me narrate a third story for you. So I stay in a gated community, okay? And many of you must be aware of how gated communities are around 5 or 5.30 in the evening, you can hear a lot of children just running up and down the streets, 
children calling out other children outside they don't even bother to go in the world is there so such free spirited children so on one such eventful evening when i was taking a stroll i saw there were about 10 kids they wanted a bicycle race to be organized so they ran up to me and i said fine i'll do that so we drew a start point and then we drew an end point and i asked all the children to stand behind the stop line and of course we had the rules and then i said i would say on your mark get set go and then you will have to start cycling and of course it's a race so whoever reaches the finishing line first without criss crossing the tracks would be the winner so with bated breath they all stood i could literally hear their hearts thumping you know could feel that adrenaline that rush of adrenaline so much of excitement on their faces and i said on your mark get set go and i said go and of course wind speed and that's how those children they started pedaling huffing puffing gasping and just focused on that finishing line there were a lot of parents around who were clapping and who were cheering wanting that their child should win now when the race was going on all of a sudden one little child lost her balance and she fell down now the parents started cheering because at that particular point in time many parents wanted their child child to utilize that opportunity to win and so they said now go 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 and so the other children started going faster and faster but there was one little boy who stopped in his tracks and he turned his cycle looked at that girl pedaled back to that girl he stretched his arm out and he said come on get up and she held his hand and she got up he helped her sit on that bicycle and together they laughed they giggled they enjoyed that wind caressing their cheeks and then they cycled chatting with each other to the finishing point now this boy might not know what it is to win the race but his focus was on his friend he might not have won the race but he had definitely won a friend for his life and so what was that overwhelming emotion running in his mind at that time what was his point of focus it was not about i should win the race it was about my friend has fallen down she belongs to me and it's my utmost responsibility to take care of her she's my friend i'm going to give you 10 seconds to absorb this message a boy who did not know or who did not even care about winning but it was about my friend went back to lift her and go back i want you all to think about this what if we had team members like this responses in the chat box how different would our teams be how would you feel when you have team members like this who would be able to look beyond achievements and promotions but are focused on you every team member focused on each other how would that be wouldn't be wonderful i mean this entire quest for racing ahead and then suddenly someone comes and talks about sense of belonging it is actually difficult to digest but let's think about it the difference that a tiny shift in attitude can come in so lesson number 2 how can we go ahead and create this sense of belonging by bringing the team together of course goals and project milestones are our focus but beyond that creating an atmosphere of cohesion creating a culture where every team member supports each other driving the message that we all grow up 
together. We win together. We win by bringing in this message of togetherness. Implicitly, we're driving the message that we are all there for each other. Something happens to you, I will not let you down. And that is how an intense sense of belonging can be created within organizations, within teams, within cultures. Now I have a small activity for all of us. I'm going to talk about a lady and I want you all to envision what kind of an attire you think she would be wearing, okay? So imagine a lady who is known the world over. She has hosted a lot of prime ministers across the world. She has frequented on television. She was invited to the United Nations. Now tell me what kind of an attire you think she would be wearing. I'll repeat that, a lady who is known the world over, who's frequented on television, who has hosted the prime ministers across the world, who was invited to the United Nations. What kind of an attire do you think she must be wearing? Quickly, responses in the chat box. Satish, Chirag, Dipti, Parvati, Faisal, Durvasalu. What kind of an attire do you think she must be wearing? Formal attire. Great, Deepthi. Can you describe formal attire, please? What do you mean by formal attire? How about, yes, while Deepthi is describing that, how about Bhavna, Bhavik, Forum, Jaita? What kind of an attire do you think this lady is wearing? So, and also it'd be great if you tell me what color. This is the third day in a row I'm doing this exercise. And each time I do this exercise, I get a very different response. Someone was telling me they envision this lady in a white shirt and a blazer. Okay, for some reason it reminds you of her. So maybe a sari, okay? A sari, a formal cotton sari, okay? Anyone else? Thank you for your responses. What would she be wearing at the United Nations? Black, blue blazer, white shirt, straight skirt, knee length. Okay, fantastic, that's really detailed. Okay, any other responses? What is she going to be wearing when she hosts the prime ministers? What is she going to be wearing at the United Nations? What would she be wearing on television? And then there was another person who was saying, oh, this person's wearing striped trousers. Another person saying a pulka dotted shirt. Yeah, these are all the kind of responses that I get. Wonderful. Thank you. Now, let's keep this lady aside. We'll look at another lady. Okay. Imagine a lady wearing her traditional nine yards sari. Hair is salt and pepper. She's wearing a bright red nose ring with diamonds glittering around that red stone. She's got jasmine flowers adorning her hair. She's seated on the floor. Her skin is slightly wrinkled. And maybe she's also stringing a beautiful jasmine garland. Whom are you reminded of? Who comes to your mind when I portray someone like this? Someone yesterday was telling me that his grandmother was what got who got portrayed in his mind. So think about this. Who gets portrayed in your mind? Salt and pepper hair, skin wrinkled, a big bindi on the forehead, nose ring, red and white stones, diamonds, mother or grandmother, Varsha. Okay, wonderful. Any other responses? 
She's wearing jasmine flowers and then she's stringing jasmine flowers. Who comes to your mind? A Ravi Varma portrait. Okay. So think about it. What if I tell you lady one and lady two are one and the same? The same lady with salt and pepper hair, stringing the garland, wearing a nine yard sari, sitting on the floor, is the same lady who's hosted the prime ministers across the world, was frequented on television, who was invited to the United Nations and delivered her signature concert. Srimati M.S. Subhalakshmi, one of the most famous Carnatic musicians of the world, I would say. Now think about it. When I talk about United Nations or hosting the prime ministers across the world, there is a perception in our mind about the attire this lady is wearing. And then the moment I talk about a lady in her nine yard sari wearing jasmine flowers and a nose ring and a bright red bindi, Somewhere down the line, the United Nations bit and hosting the prime ministers across the world bit just vanishes, just gets evaporated. Because somewhere in within our mind, we've got slots, we've got stereotypes, we've got our own prejudice, we've got our own impressions left by experiences that we're not able to fit one and two together. Demolishing, destroying and crumbling these stereotypes is what a sense of belonging can do. Think about it. A person who has a sense of belonging within their teens is able to stretch a tad further, is able to do anything to go ahead and achieve that goal, is able to go ahead and say, fine, I understand I've been at work for the last 10 hours. It's okay. But unless I solve this particular problem, I am not going to go away. That is what a sense of belonging can do. So what can a sense of belonging do? Demonstrate that I am beyond stereotypes. Go ahead and crumble the prejudice that people have around. Go ahead and destroy barriers of bias and bring in a lot of inclusivity. And this particular example is an indication of how our thoughts are when it comes to diversity and inclusion. How inclusive is my work culture? Am I able to absorb people's different perspectives? Am I able to disagree freely? Am I able to respect a person who has just the diagrammatically opposite viewpoint from mine? If we are able to do that, we are actually making them feel belong to our organization. How many of us remember our very first day? If you have lateral joinees, I would uh, suggest lateral joinees to think about it. How many of you remember your first day at the workplace? Was it a memorable one? Would it be something you would want to go through again and again? Or was it a very boring one? Think about it. Now, I've had different varied experiences because I've been a lateral uh, joinee quite a few times and I've joined from campus and then I've been a lateral joinee. So I've been subjected to different sorts of experiences. So there was one experience which I would like to talk about where I joined this organization and after the initial formalities, which were done in a very quick manner, the entire day was exciting. So they took us into this room, this big dark room. It was like a movie theater. And then they played the movie of the company. And the movie was played in such a manner that the entire movie welcomed me 
to become a part of the organization. That movie demonstrated how much that organization was happy to having me. That movie motivated me. I can still feel those goosebumps when I speak about that experience because the music, the scenes, the dialogue, the entire experience for those 30 minutes in that audio visual room left me with an immense sense of pride that, hey, I made the right choice in joining this organization. And it didn't stop there. Once I came out of that theater, I was then accompanied by my so-called team. My team members were introduced and the way they spoke to me, there was literally no ice that needed to be broken. It was as if they'd known me all along. So they took me for lunch, the cafeteria, and then they asked me, what do you like? They took me for coffee. In between 10 minutes, we had a little bit chat on understanding what each other's passions were, what are we interested in? What are our hobbies? What are our aspirations? And throughout the journey, we also managed to find out a lot of commonalities. Hey, are you from the city? I'm also from the city. Hey, do you like this particular author? I like that particular author. So at the end of my very first day of joining the organization, the feelings that were left in me were an immense sense of pride, a lot of fulfillment, because I thought I'd made the right choice by joining this organization a lot of camaraderie between amongst ourselves, looking forward to going to work the next day, lot of energy and lot of enthusiasm. That's how my first day in one particular organization was. I'll talk about another day one in another organization where I joined in as a lateral entry. And in that organization, I remember the vice president came and she was waiting for me at the reception. At the moment I walked in, she was there, she welcomed me. And everyone there knew that I was joining the organization because everyone was informed that Sindhu Kalyana Sundaram is joining this department with this particular role. And so it was not news. And she took me personally throughout the organization introducing me, telling people the experience I had, where I was joining from and what I would be doing. It was fantastic. A vice president accompanying me to every single employee, to every single team in that office. And every time someone met me, it was as if they already knew because people were already informed. So they were like, hey, Sindhu, we were waiting for you welcome. And that was a very warm feeling. Another organization which succeeded in making me feel, hey, I've made the right choice. I really look forward to going to work. I was having a discussion with one of my friends and I was asking her, how was your first day? Now, unfortunately, her first day was not as exciting as what I had. So her first day was slightly different. So she went into the organization. She was waiting at the reception. So the receptionist asked her to wait. Now, apparently the person concerned had not yet reached work. So this lady was left to wait. Uh, there were no magazines left. So she was just fiddling with her mobile phone. And then about 25 minutes later, someone from HR made a call to reception and said, just give her the visitor's badge because they still hadn't prepared the employee badge at that time. So at every entry and exit point on that particular day, she was completely dependent on some unknown stranger in that organization to open and close the doors. And that was not it. She had to go through two hours of grueling formalities of reading through a lot of paperwork signing, agreeing, questioning, and then followed by a lot of presentations on code of conduct, ethics, morals, values of the organization. And then you had leaders from every organization, department from every strategic business unit coming in and making a presentation on what products, what services they offer, how different their business unit is from the other business units in the department, what is the hierarchical structure of every department. And by the time it was five o'clock, she was exhausted. 
And when she came back home, she was dreading. Oh my God, another day. I don't know what I have to endure. Think about it. How are we creating and shaping and sculpting day one for a new journey? That can be a momentous occasion for us to induce, introduce, create, sculpt a sense of belonging. Remember that first organization where I moved out, I came out of the movie theater. I felt I just belonged there. This is it. This is the place I want to be. That's how I felt. Are we doing that? Or are we leaving our employees feeling, oh my God, how many more presentations? How many more, how much more paperwork? How many more new people will I have to introduce myself to? How many one-on-ones? How many conference room bookings? Think about it. As HR, we have the opportunity to make the day one of an employee a momentous one. Believe me, when day one is momentous, that sense of belonging has automatically crept in. That energy, that enthusiasm, that drive, that interest, that sense of pride would automatically propel that employee to align with the organization's values, vision, and goals. So how are we going to make their day momentous? Now, it's okay if we've not succeeded in making day one momentous. How about making tomorrow a momentous day for your teams? How about celebrating the rest of the few months? How about ensuring every single day leaves the employees feel valued? So when we move down to feeling valued, empathy plays a very big role. So I told you about the story of the founder director who delivered 200 chairs at the doorstep of employees. Let me narrate another story from my school life. So one of the schools that I studied in uh, was a very liberal school. So when I talk about liberal school, we probably didn't have uh, too strict teachers. Um, we had a beautiful cafeteria. We could listen to music in classes whenever there was a free period. So I was 11th grader, I remember at that time, and it was the time of our farewell function. And the farewell party was just, I think, about two or three days later. And we were so excited to be organizing that for our seniors. And that was the time Backstreet Boys album. I don't know how many of you are aware about that. I remember the song uh, from uh, Backstreet Boys that was playing in the background. It was lunch hour. So we all quickly finished our lunch and we thought, hey, why don't we convert this class into a discotheque? Okay. So the entire class decided, let's play Backstreet Boys and let's dance. We've got another 20 minutes. And so we did that. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, I was the class leader. So I was given the responsibility to dance near the door because uh, if I could spot any teacher going about, I could warn my fellow students, right? So we switched on Backstreet Boys and we started dancing and we did not even realize the bell go. And we didn't even realize the lunch hour was over and the next classes had started. And no teacher came into our class. I think it was because that particular teacher did not turn up that day. And we were oblivious to whatever was happening. We were dancing, few of us standing on tables, chairs, on the platform. I, I can still feel that energy. When all of a sudden, I saw the mathematics professor come and stand near the door and his hands were on his hips and he had, had this glare. And then there was spin drop silence. I mean, just Backstreet Boys singing, but all of us stood like statues because we know we were done for. And I literally knew it's over. I'm standing near the door and I was the first person he saw. And I quickly ran, turned off the tape recorder. And I was about to say, I'm sorry, sir. When he says, Sindhu, what do you think all of you are doing? And Somebody in the background was literally trembling and saying, oh, sir, it's the uh, farewell party. And, and you know what he said? He looks around at all of us and then he looks at me and says, 
Sindhu, would you mind reducing the volume of the music and close the doors and dance? I'm handling trigonometry in the next class. So it's quite distracting to hear music. And you can imagine how the entire classroom broke into smiles. And till date, I'm sure each one of us would say that he was our favorite professor, a teacher who actually could understand the kind of emotions or feelings or the joy or thrill that a 15 or 16 year old was going through. What would be the impact of curtailing and how nice it is actually to let those children do, indulge in some harmless fun. And that is why when I still meet my classmates from that particular school, all of us literally use this word saying we belong to that school. We literally belong there. We shared those values. We shared that energy, that enthusiasm. We stood by each other. We trusted our teachers so much so that the next time when the same professor came and said, you have a test, we never grumbled because he gave us that freedom. And by giving us that freedom, he also inculcated a sense of responsibility within each one of us. So if a professor could go and say, go and dance for Backstreet Boys when mathematics class was going on, he could still come back and say, tomorrow morning, you have a surprise test, an examination at eight o'clock and none of us would grumble. That is sense of belonging, being created with freedom being created with a sense of responsibility that is automatically seeped and nobody told us that we have to do it. And that, my friends, is the next ingredient towards creating the sense of belonging. And finally, I would also like to narrate, I started off with GE, I will finish off with another story from GE. GE Capital was a uh, located in Hyderabad and Gurgaon, talking about Hyderabad. Now, this was uh, the business process outsourcing arm of GE. And as you know, these organizations used to work 24 hours. And one particular point in time, I remember there were employees who were working. And so the evening shifts would start at 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7, and would go on till 11. So you had people working all through the night. And one particular day, uh, employees were in at the workplace and people had started coming in and there were people in the morning shifts who had to leave at six o'clock in the evening when the riots broke out in Hyderabad. So when the riots broke out, what happened was <clears throat> employees who were at home could not come to the workplace. Employees who were at the workplace could not go home. So they were stuck up. But the company had to live up to its service levels, right? They cannot stop service just because riots had broken down. That's what they believed. So they made a request, an earnest appeal to the employees saying, we know you've already worked for nine or 10 hours and your friends will not be able to come into work today because of the riots. We appeal to you earnestly requesting if you could do a double shift. And since all of us we're still there. There was no opportunity for us to go back home. We accepted and we said, okay, we'll do it. And anyway, we were with our friends. But you know what the company did? Apart from giving us dinner, apart from giving us breakfast, apart from giving us lunch the next day, they organized fresh, thick mattresses, pillows, bed sheets, toothbrush, toothpaste, coupons. I mean, what not all these accessories. And they made our lives comfortable that one particular day. And then the riots down, died down, the city came back to a calm and then we all went, we were dropped back home. One week later, when we went back to work, we were during, in, amidst our work, when all of a sudden there were two or three people from air charges coming out and there was a lot of commotion. And you know what was happening? They were handing out huge framed certificates. I still have that certificate. It's a glass framed certificate saying, we at GE acknowledge your contribution in times of crisis. We thank you for your immense valuable contribution and for having stretched. And it was signed by the head, by the SBU head. And it was also signed by some important people. Think about it. 20 years later, I would still call it one of my prized possession of my career. 
So the company left no stern unturn, unturned to make the employees feel valued, to acknowledge their contribution, to go ahead and say, you have stretched and it's my responsibility to acknowledge. So much so that everyone literally felt a sense of, wow, this is where I belong. This is where I'm acknowledged. This is where I'm appreciated. This is where I'm recognized. This is where I will grow. This is where I will stay. That is the magic. The sense of belonging can create amongst the workforce and employees. And automatically, when an employee feels valued, when they feel trusted, when they have a sense of belonging, emotionally, there is an elevation emotionally they feel motivated they feel secured and there's a lot of interest in their work emotionally when people are motivated functionally they tend to become productive they tend to become very creative and then all they do is align themselves to the organization and towards its values and its mission because the most beautiful things in life are those that cannot be seen or even touched. They can only be felt with the human heart. And we have that magic of making human beings feel that most beautiful feeling, the feeling of being loved and the feeling of having been belonged to that particular place. Over to you, Peter, for any questions. Thank you, Sindhu. So before we move in the Q&A session, we will be initiating a poll with all our participants to kindly share your feedback. So while you're doing so, we'd request all our participants to kindly post your questions in the chat window. Once again, I thank all our participants for joining our session today. We have received a lot of inquiry about the e-certificate offered by HRAI. You can claim your certificate by sharing your details, that is your name and the session that you have attended in an email to the email ID provided in the chat window. We will email the certificate to you based on these details that we receive. Request all our participants to kindly share your questions pertaining to our today's session in the chat window. So, Sindhu, we have received a couple of questions uh, at the time of registration. So, uh, one of them is, what is the sense of belongingness and how do we make employees empowered and included in the organization? A sense of belonging is that feeling that an employee has within themselves that wakes them up even in the middle of the night and tells them, hey, you know what, that work is pending at your workplace and you can't sleep. You know what, you've got that milestone to go and you can't sleep. And they don't do it out of stress. They do it out of inspiration. Sense of belonging is an emotion which lets the employee go and assume ownership and accountability without being told to be, to be an owner or to be accountable. Sense of belonging is when employees feel that they are into the organization. They are the soul of the organization. And like today, I shared different techniques on how we can incorporate sense of belonging, create a momentous induction day, demonstrate care and concern to your fellow team workers. Number three, demonstrate empathy. Number four, build trust. Number five, be there, acknowledge their contribution, acknowledge the value that they bring in. Most importantly, trust them. Absolutely rightly answered. Um, this takes us to our next question from uh, Jayata. In the age of remote work, how do we still ensure that personal touch is our interaction with members, personal touch in our interactions with members, let's say during induction or onboarding. Right. 
Fantastic, very pertinent uh, question, Jayita. In the pandemic, we've actually identified and we've associated ourselves to new ways of working. And over the past 12 months, where uh, from the company uh, Sarva Happiness, where I work with uh, companies to bring the sense of belonging, number one is let's turn on the cameras when we interact with our team members. We as it is are being separated by a virtual screen. We understand the bandwidth issues, we understand the network issues, but if we want to resonate with each other, when we want to create that sort of personal interaction, it's important we turn on our cameras and talk. Number two, if you're really working remotely, it's important that we actually get together once a week and talk about things which are important for us. For example, my aspirations, my goals, my hobbies, what are you doing? The reason is when we are at the physical workplace, things are tangible. You know, the environment is already set. The ambience is already there. We take all that for granted. It's only the interaction that's missing, which we need. But in the virtual workspace, we need to focus on the environment, the ambience, the sound, the volume, the message, the camera. There are a lot of intangibles. Hence, the frequency of interaction with our team members is important to maintain that sort of personal touch when people are away from the workspace. There are companies where we've suggested, why don't you just go ahead and give a casual call to your team members asking them, how are you? How was your family? How many of us have actually done that? So when we put in such protocols, they start becoming the DNA of an organization so much so that every Friday, your team members would actually start looking for those sessions, coffee sessions, you know, just hold a coffee mug every Friday, 20 minutes, just chat over a cup of coffee or tea, anything that's non-work. That way, we're maintaining that personal touch with our team members. So this reminds me of one of our activities that we used to do at our organization. We used to have this Friday uh, potluck kind of an activity that, we, that everyone would come together and bring their stuff. And also it was a kind of get together that we used to have. Yeah. So that yeah. takes us to our next question. Uh, can you please share a uh, strategical approach that we can incorporate to create a culture of belongingness in the organization? Any kind of a strategical approach? Yes. So organizations by nature have their own culture, which is set in. But how much of that culture gets percolated down to the teams is dependent on the leaders of that particular team. So the middle management plays a very important role in imbibing the culture that the organization wants to set in. Many a time, the middle management acts as a filter. So when the organization starts sending so much, the middle management fil many times filter and only little bits drip, literally drip and get percolated. And hence the strategy for every team is different. For example, if you are a member of the R&D team, the composition of the R&D team is very different from the composition of a sales team. The nature of job is different. The mindsets, the attitudes could be different. How do you go ahead and build a sense of belonging in an R&D team? It's important that we start doing a lot of gregarious activity because people are completely involved in research. They're reading, they're exploring, they're experimenting, but somewhere they also need to vent out. And so giving that space to vent out, being there to listen to those people, being approachable will help to create that sense of belonging. Whereas in a sales team, many a time when people are outgoing and they are talking, what is needed there is, is there someone to listen to me? I'm talking the whole day, but is someone listening to me within the organization? Do they understand the kind of difficulties I go through when I meet an annoying customer? Do they understand how difficult it is for me to sell a five crore machine? I'm not experienced, but the company has given me this job. So here it's important that there is someone who listens, someone who empathizes. So sense of belonging, like I said, cannot be done with pen and paper. 
but what sense of belonging what's beautiful about sense of belonging is with a little bit of care little bit of concern little bit of empathy and little bit of love it can just seep into people and suddenly over a period of time when we mindfully demonstrate each one of these traits the results would just blossom beautifully answered sindhu so uh, keeping the time constraints in mind uh, we'll take this final question that we have received um, being a leader how do i know the level of belongingness employees feel within the organization and how do i identify the road blockers and the areas of improvement to increase the sense of belongingness in the employees great question and there are very simple ways number 1 when you give a piece of work to your team how many of your team members are receptive to taking ownership test number 1 test number 2 when there is a discussion how many of your team members can freely disagree amongst themselves think about it amongst amidst your family members you would just say no i don't agree with you and your relationship stays the same if you're able to do that at the workplace that's fantastic because that's an indicator of a sense of belonging i know that when i disagree with you and i i don't agree with your viewpoint my relationship with you will still remain intact that is a test for sense of belonging number 3 how comfortable are your team members in asking for help when they do not know are they worried that they would be perceived as someone who is a novice or they don't care about it and they know genuinely they can go and ask for help and people are ready to help them number 4 what is the frequency of acknowledgement and appreciation that your team members get from each other these four can act as predominant indicators to you to let you know what is the intensity of sense of belonging in your team Thank you so much, Sindhu, for an enlightening session with your beautiful stories that brought out the true essence of inclusion and belongingness. It has been a pleasure being with you today. I'm sure our participants have had a lot to learn and take away from this session. Before we conclude with our today's session, we would also want to thank the association members, that is, Kesha, Nascom COE, LinkedIn Local, Talgro, TLE, and Cliptalk. for supporting these hri events to know more about these associations i request you to kindly visit the link provided in the chat window thank you once again dear speaker and our participants for joining us today do join us for our next master class tomorrow on diversity and inclusion at workplace by ms ratna joshi head of lnd mahindra and mahindra <clears throat> on the 24th of feb I request you to kindly register for this event at the link mentioned in the chat window also to join the dialogue 2021 whatsapp chat group to the invite link shared in the chat window that's it from us today see you soon stay safe take care and bye for now thank you thank you sindhu Thank you Riddhi Thank you Sham we are by conclude with our today's session Thank you Parvati